Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to talk about how we can compare fractions using the number line. So our learning goal for today says, I can use the position of a fraction on a number line to compare it to other fractions. So that means we're really going to be looking at where the fractions are on the number line, like in relation to like zero and one, and seeing like how far they are from one end of the number line. Um, that's the position to be able to compare it to the other fractions. So make sure that you have your dry erase board before you get started. All right, friends, so we're going to get started with our application problem. So Thomas has two sheets of paper. He wants to punch four equally spaced holes along the edge of each sheet. Draw Thomas's two sheets of paper next to each other so that the ends meet. Label a number line from zero at the start of his first paper to two at the end of his second paper. Show Thomas where to hole punch his papers and label the fractions. And then you'll have to determine what fraction is labeled at the eighth hole. All right, so friends, that's a lot to kind of think about, right? So let's talk about this problem before we get started. So I kind of want to draw, like, this is my sheet of paper, right? So think about, like, you take your paper that you have now and you kind of turn it on your side, on its side, right? And then you want to put in four equally spaced holes along each side. Okay, so here's my two sheets of paper. And notice how in the middle, I kind of had them like touch each other because you're lining them right up together. So now you're gonna draw your number line starting with zero on the left and two all the way on the right. You're gonna label your fractions and then you're gonna find out which fraction is on the eighth hole of the paper. So you like you would start over here like one, two, three, and so on until you get to that eighth hole. All right, so pause the video, draw the paper just like I did, and then draw your number line with the fractions, and then find out which fraction is labeled at the eighth hole. And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here I'm gonna draw in my number line. Notice how I have zero all the way on the left, one is right in the middle because that's the end of the first paper, and then two is at the end because that's the end of the second paper. So here I'm going to come in and put my um, divide up and partition it by the poles on the paper. I'm going to do that for both sides, and then I'm going to come in and label. So I know that zero would really be like zero fifths because I'm splitting this up into fifths on my paper because there's four parts, um, four holes. And then every time there's a hole, there's a line. And that means we're going to divide it into like one additional part there. So we would have zero fifths, one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths, which is also one hole, six fifths, seven fifths, eight fifths, nine fifths, and 10 fifths, which also is two. Another trick, friends, think about it. When you get to those whole numbers, take the top number and divide it by the bottom number, and that should give you your whole number of um, on your number line. So, for example, 10 divided by 5 is 2. So that's how you can check to make sure that you're labeling your fractions correctly. Okay, so now the next step here that I've labeled everything, I need to find that eighth hole. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to slide this down, and that is 9 fifths. So 9 fifths is labeled at the eighth hole. Okay, so that was a tricky one. Did you guys get it? Okay, well, great job if you got it. If not, hopefully my explanation helped to explain that and make that easier to understand. All right, so now let's jump into today's work. So here we're going to draw two same size rectangles on your board and then partition each into four equal parts. So I want you to draw them on top of each other as you're going. Your two rectangles, draw them on top of each other and then split them into four equal parts. Then you're going to shade your top rectangle to show one fourth and shade the bottom rectangle to show three copies of one fourth. Okay, so draw your two rectangles, partition into four equal parts. The top rectangle is one fourth and the bottom is three copies of one fourth. So pause the video, do that, and then click play when you're ready for, to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here are my two rectangles. They are partitioned into fourths. 
The first one is shaded as one fourth, and the bottom is three copies of one fourth, which is also known as three fourths. All right, so compare the models. Which shaded fraction is larger, and how do you know? Yeah, three fourths is larger, right? And then how do you know? Oops, sorry. We know that because three parts or three copies of one fourth is greater than one copy of one fourth. All right, so we're going to use our rectangles to measure and draw a number line from zero to one. Partition it into fourths and label the holes and fractions on your number line. So you can go back here, friends, if you want to be able to line up your dry erase board on top of your rectangle, or you can draw a new number line that has four equal parts and then label those parts. So pause the video, number line, partition into four parts, and then label the holes and the fractions on your number line. And then you click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, so friends, here is my number line. Okay, zero to one, and it's partitioned into fourths. I can label those parts, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths, which also is known as one whole. All right, so compare one fourth to three fourths using your number line. How do you know which fraction is larger? So pause the video. Check out your number line, find where one fourth is, find where three fourths is, and compare, or how do you know, uh, compare them and find out which fraction is larger. And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna actually label these. So here is one fourth in yellow, and here is three fourths in red. I can look and see that from zero to one fourth, this is the distance, that yellow line. And then if I wanna see the distance from zero to three fourths, I can draw another line. I can see that one fourth is a shorter distance from zero, so it's the smaller fraction. Or I could say that three fourths is a greater distance from zero, so it's the larger fraction. So we're talking about that position on the number line and seeing that one fourth is closer to zero, so that means it's gonna be smaller. And then we're seeing that the position of three fourths is farther or greater away from zero, so three fourths is going to be a greater fraction. We can also notice too, friends, that when we're comparing fractions, the fraction that's on the left side of our number line is always going to be the smaller fraction. And the number on the right side when you're comparing two fractions is going to be the greater fraction. So that's another cool trick to kind of keep in your back pocket when you're comparing fractions, especially when you're using a number line. All right, so think back to our application problem. What were we trying to find out? Were we trying to find out the length of the page? Or I'm sorry, the length of the page from edge to the from the edge to the each hole? Or are we simplifying finding the location of the hole? It's kind of tricky, right? Well, if we look back at this, we were trying to find the location of each hole, and that's why we were labeling those fractions. All right, so remember the pepper problem from yesterday when we were talking about our application problem? What were we comparing then? The length of the peppers or the location of the peppers? So let's look back at this. Here's kind of like our number line that we used from our previous lesson. Was this the length of the peppers or the location of the peppers? Here we're talking about the length of each pepper, right? So in today's, um, sorry, let's talk about this. What is the same and what is different about the way we solve these problems? So thinking about both application problems, we can say that in both we place the fractions on a number line. That's true. And then to do that, we actually had to find the distance of each from zero to. So that was kind of helping us solve those problems. Now some ways that they were different was in Thomas's with the paper, we were more worried about the 
position of each fraction, so he would put the holes in the right places. And in the pepper problem, the distance from zero to the fraction told us the length of each pepper, and then we compared it. So kind of different approaches to both of those problems. All right, so how do the distance and the position of fractions on a number line relate to each other when we compare fractions on the number line? Well, one thing is you use the distance from zero to find the fraction's placement. Or you use the placement to find the distance. So they're both part of comparing. The part you focus on just depends on what you're trying to find out. All right, so how does that relate to our work on the pepper um, on the pepper and hole punch problems from the previous lesson and today's lesson. Well, sometimes you focus more on the distance, like in the pepper problem, and sometimes you focus more on the position, like in Thomas's problem. It really just depends on what the problem is asking you, on which method or which strategy you would, you would want to use. So it takes some practice, but don't worry, we're going to keep working on it. All right, so awesome. You guys did a great job using the position of a fraction on a number line to compare it to other fractions. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.